my body is ready for the return of the steam machine. But one has to wonder, is it all sunshine and rainbows? What is the steam machine really for? Who is it for? And what issues could there be? But before that though, if you like this video or any other videos on my channel, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel helps me in the long run. And if you're looking for more content, be sure to check out Off the Console. It's a podcast started by me, Garner Bryant, and Games Revealed. And of course, we talk about the latest gaming news and, well actually not just gaming, but also multimedia as well. Feel free to check us out on YouTube in video form, or if you prefer an audio form, you can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever apps you use for your podcasts. Episodes typically release on Mondays. The Steam Machine, for those who may have been living under a rock, is a new Steam-powered console designed for your living room. Now, I say console because it's clearly meant to be used in a console situation, but it actually is a full-fledged PC. So we know that Valve is using a semi-custom CPU and a semi-custom discrete GPU for this device. Now we could draw some parallels like most on the internet have been doing with like existing AMD GPUs. But remember, Valve controls both the software and hardware stacks. So Valve is going to try to squeeze out as much performance as they can. Even if some of the specs sound a little... what's the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah, anemic. Especially with Valve's lofty claims that this can game at 4K60, with FSR of course. It's certainly a big claim to live up to, especially since the PS5 Pro advertises that, and not even every PS5 Pro game runs at 60fps at 4K. But if you're a console gamer looking at the Steam Machine for the very first time, well let me tell you, there's a couple of things a Steam Machine can do that your average console cannot do. First and foremost, free online multiplayer. See, with every single console that you buy, whether it's Microsoft's or Sony's or Nintendo's, you gotta buy online, you gotta pay for online, and to be honest, it's been getting more expensive. The only one that hasn't raised their prices just yet is Nintendo, but even accessing all of their features requires an additional payment as well. Though Nintendo's may be fairly cheap at like 20 bucks a year for a single person, Nothing is cheaper than free, and free online multiplayer is something PC gamers have enjoyed since the beginning of gaming and will continue to enjoy until the end of time. And should you buy the Steam Machine, or maybe even the Steam Deck, then you too will enjoy this privilege. You know what you could do by saving money on online multiplayer? You could buy another game. Really. Like, instead of buying a game and then having to spend an extra 60 or 70 or no, I think it's $80 a year. Instead, you can just buy the game and play it online. Now, if we were to take Sony's current rates, it costs $80 a year for like the lowest tier PlayStation Plus. If, say, for example, you wanted a game for three years online, you'd be paying $240. That's like the price of three or four AAA games. Or if you're into indie games, way more indie games. Another thing you can do with a Steam Machine that you can't do with a PS5 or Xbox, accessing games outside of your little walled garden. There's this misconception that you have to buy your games on Steam and you have to play them from Steam, and that you can't play games from like your GOG or Epic Games library or whatever be it. Valve openly emphasizes the fact that you can run games from different launchers on their hardware because you bought it and it's yours and they've said this like almost verbatim that it's your hardware. I myself have showcased this a number of times on my Steam Deck. You can run your Epic Games games on your Steam Deck. Not Fortnite, naturally, but all of those free epic games you claimed over the years, yes, you can play all of those on your Steam Deck. What about your DRM free games? Yes, you can run all of your GOG games on the Steam Deck as well. And given that it's the same operating system on the Steam Machine, you can presumably do the same thing as well. There's nothing stopping you. Now given you have to route everything through Steam's game mode, um, it may not be necessarily as easy as doing it on Windows. But let me tell you, it's not very difficult. And of course, there are tutorials out there for the Steam Deck right now that will probably apply to the Steam Machine. 
But of course, it's a good excuse to make another tutorial video, but this time for the Steam Machine, huh? But speaking of tutorials, there is something else that you can do on PC that you can't do on PlayStation 5 or Xbox or Nintendo, at least not in an official capacity or even a user-friendly way of doing so. Full fat PC modding. Now, some may look at the Linux interface and think, oh, you can't mod these games like you can on Windows. But that's a straight up lie. You can. You will. I have. And I certainly will again. I've done quite a few videos on modding games on the Steam Deck. Anything from modding Risk of Rain 2, to modding Fallout New Vegas, to modding basically whatever you want. Yes, even things like running Reshade on the Steam Deck. It's all possible. Now, it's not to say that modding games on Linux is one-to-one -to, -one to modding games on Windows, but that's what my guides are for, and I'm gonna say this right now so that everyone knows it. I might revisit some of my old guides and get them working for the Steam Machine. But of course, sometimes modding can be a little daunting, which is why Valve has something called the Steam Workshop. Essentially, you can just click and download mods if you're buying Steam games. Of course, your game has to support Steam Workshop, but there are quite a few high-profile games that do. My favorite example, of course, is Rivals of Aether. It's basically like Smash, except with original characters. But there are a ton of mods that add your favorite characters from your favorite franchises, yes, even Nintendo games, to it. Like, yeah, seriously. It's like Super Smash Mugen. Heck, even Halo has a lot of mods. I never talked about Halo mods, I was gonna talk about them. But Halo The Master Chief Collection has workshop support. Yes, you can play Halo mods really easily. You have to disable easy anti-cheat, and Steam gives you the option to do so every time you launch the game. But yeah, Halo mods, literally at the click of a finger and like a download later. Now I'm sure someone smarter than me is going to bring up the fact that you can mod Bethesda games on Xbox and PlayStation, but you don't have full access to modding. From what I understand, these mods are somewhat limited to in-game assets, but with actual modding, you can just add whatever you want. Do you like Thomas the Tank Engine as the dragon in Skyrim? You can do that. It's kind of ridiculous, but you can do that. You want to hear about something else you can do on the Steam Machine? Emulation. Yes, that's right. Emulation. Something that your PlayStation or your Xbox or your Switch cannot do without explicit hacks or maybe just can't do at all. Retro games are in vogue, which is why they keep re-releasing older games for modern systems. But with emulation, you don't have to worry about any of that. You can just pick your games that you hopefully legally ripped yourself and play them on the Steam machine. Emulation for most is a bit of a taboo subject because, well, generally speaking, people do pirate when it comes to emulation because, let's be real, quite a few of these games can't be bought today. And for some of these older games that aren't re-released on modern systems, piracy really is the only way, unfortunately. Of course, I don't endorse piracy because what self-respecting YouTuber would, right? But yes, emulation is super important, and thanks to something like Emu Deck, you can set up emulation very easily on the Steam Deck. So I am like 100% certain they're gonna make Emu Deck work on the Steam Machine. And one of the coolest things you can do with the Steam Machine is use whatever controller you want because it has Bluetooth. Yes, you should be using the Steam Controller, and yes, I'm pretty sure the Steam Machine is gonna come with a Steam Controller. But quite literally, there's nothing stopping you from using, say, a Bluetooth controller, like a PS5 controller if you want, or an Xbox controller, or heck, even a Nintendo Switch controller. Or you could use those 8 bit controllers, or you could use a keyboard and mouse to play your games. Or you could use a fight stick to play your fighting games. How do I know these controllers work on the Steam Machine? Well, it's because the Steam Machine runs the same operating system as the Steam Deck, SteamOS. And all these work on the Steam Deck, so there's no reason why this wouldn't also work on the Steam Machine. And of course, it's time to talk about some of the concerns I have with the Steam Machine. My biggest concern, of course, is the price. So, of course, we don't know what the exact price is. And given how crazy the RAM market's been in the past couple of weeks, we don't know what the price will be. 
So yeah, no concrete price. Of course, that's to be expected with a device that's not even for pre-order yet, but it is worth mentioning that there have been some rumblings as to what the pricing could be. For example, IGN did an interview with both Yazan al Hayat and also Pierre Lugrafai, and IGN of course asks Yazan about affordability, and of course he says that the Steam Machine is going to be really competitive to that. But then we have some other rumblings from people like Linus Tech Tips, who actually visited Valve HQ and got to try it out and actually spoke with some Valve employees. And one choice quote Linus said was that it's going to be priced like a PC, not like a console with subsidies. Which is kind of unfortunate too, because consoles are oftentimes sold with subsidies because they get you into the hardware and then you have to buy their games. I really would have thought Valve would subsidize the Steam Machine, because after all, Valve does own the infinite money farm that is Steam. Gamers Nexus was also at Valve, and apparently a Valve employee told him it would be priced like an entry-level PC, and specifically said not like a console, which... What does entry-level PC mean in this case? Because it could mean anything. They also didn't say entry-level gaming PC, because I could probably draw a conclusion as to what that would mean. But an entry-level PC, that could be like $500 for like an office PC that you could use to write Word and stuff. Or they could mean like an entry-level PC, like a really crappy $200 computer that you can buy and use to go on the internet, and that's basically it. Or they mean like an entry level gaming PC that's like $700 to $800 for an okay gaming experience. Like, the term entry level PC doesn't really mean anything until they specify what sort of sector they're talking about. What is consistent though is that both Linus Tech Tips and Gamers Nexus spoke with a Valve employee, and they were careful to mention they weren't being priced like consoles. Now, this could mean that they're going to be priced cheaper than consoles, but this could also, and more likely, mean it's going to be more expensive than consoles. And I don't know how to feel about this. Truth be told, I hope it isn't like over $500. And honestly, at some point, we have to draw the line somewhere. At what point is it more economical and probably better to buy a framework desktop and install Bazai on that? That will always be a major consideration. There is also one other issue that currently affects the Steam Deck and will most certainly affect the Steam Machine. Anti-cheat. Some of the most popular games out there are not playable on Linux or, for that matter, Steam Deck, due to anti-cheat reasons. Let's look at Fortnite for example. Yes, I get it. You probably don't like Fortnite, I don't like Fortnite either, but we have to recognize that the Switch 1, Switch 2, Xbox, PlayStation, and Windows computers can all run Fortnite, but the Steam Deck and I guess Steam Machines now can't run Fortnite. It's a really bad look regardless of your stance on Fortnite. The situation with Apex Legends is even worse. It used to run on Linux. They used to have it enabled for Linux, but then they took away that feature. Same deal with GT Online, you used to be able to run that on Steam Deck just fine, but then they added Battle Eye and then, all of a sudden, now, Steam Deck players can't play it, and this is going to affect the Steam Machine as well. I'm of the opinion that all of these games should be playable on Steam Deck, even if I'm not the biggest fan personally. League of Legends, Valorant, and of course, 2XKO are big examples as well, using the Riot Games anti-cheat. This is all entirely the developer's fault. They don't let these games run on Linux for a specific reason. All of these companies that make all of these major games have enough money to be able to support a Linux version of each game, just period. They can do it. They have the money. They just don't want to spend the money. And, I mean, on one hand, you can't blame them, but on the other hand, yes I can. And one more thing that's kind of a niche situation, but one that's worth mentioning because this wants to position itself as console-like. That being split-screen on PC. See, split-screen is a thing on consoles. It still is a thing on consoles, and some games still release with split-screen. Borderlands 4, for example, has split-screen on Xbox and PlayStation, but not on PC. The upcoming Halo remake is supposed to have split-screen on consoles, but probably not on PC. 
You may be asking yourself, why does this matter? Well, that's because the Steam machine is going to be running the PC versions of these games. Now, I will admit, Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo all have the ability to have separate profiles logged in at the same time. And in the case of Borderlands 4, you can have each profile on PlayStation have their own characters. Your characters are tied to your PlayStation user accounts. And admittedly, Valve doesn't have anything quite like that just yet. And do I think it's possible for Valve to do something like this? Absolutely. I think Valve could do this. But I also think someone's got to change the stigma around PC games not having split screen at all. Now, it's not to say that Steam doesn't have a ton of couch co-op games, because they do. But I really would like to see some more split screen games for the sorts of games that get split screen on console. Like, it would feel kind of bad to buy one of these and then you want to play Borderlands 4 split screen. And you can't because developers don't let PC gamers do split screen for some dumb arbitrary reason. This is the end of my little rant and honestly, I'm still very excited for the Steam Machine. I've always wanted one of the Steam Machines, but I never got a chance to get one. And by the time I was able to get one, they had already gone out of business. They stopped selling the Steam Machines, they discontinued them and the Steam Controller. But thankfully, I was able to grab one of the Steam controllers for five bucks. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.